Spartans! What is your profession? All you see on CNN is anti-Trump slogans and white supremacy. But where are those good old conservative values and the faith in God? Well, lucky there's the orange man pod. Lucky there's two men who positively can do all the things that make us laugh and cry. We are the orange man pod. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Orange Men Podcast. Dave and Clinton here with you on a Friday night. Spinning the truth. What's up, Clint? How you doing? What's up? Welcome back. What's going on, man? Nothing, man. Hey. So what are we doing? That was a good one. Yeah. I mean, a lot to talk about. Um, What's up? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was uh, looking at this Maxine Waters thing. You know what this is all about? Yeah, it's kind of... I watched it briefly. She's uh, She's crazy. Well, it's, it's that's one crazy lady right it's, there. It's almost, it's laughable the what? way. Kinda, Why is she so angry? Kind of like what, what Joe was just saying on on our podcast earlier with uh, Joe Biden was on our podcast with the, uh, with the lies, <laughs> and it's what you have these people that just follow along and they're gonna keep on repeating the lie until everybody believes them. Okay, let's so see. let's go. Last Friday. We received another strong jobs report, which showed that 678,000 jobs were added to the economy in the month of February. The record-setting job creation we saw during the first year of the Biden administration continues. Okay. Well, then what the fuck are we here for? Everything is all right. Is it? Let's just go home, have a couple beers, and not talk about this nonsense anymore. Everything is fine. Okay. But again, she's, everything is fine. She's lying. Oh, she's lying. I think she's lying. God damn it. She's reading her prepared statement talking points. Let's uh, go. Listen more. Uh. Indeed. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Indeed. She in says. Indeed. Indeed. I'm very. What's the What's the definition of indeed? I don't know. Isn't, Isn't like that a... like a job site? Or <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. I mean, beat you to it. Nah, you good. All right. Signed into law by President Biden, the U.S. has had a stronger economic recovery than any other advanced economy worldwide. Doesn't Maxine Waters know that Joe Biden hates black people? Doesn't she know that he is a lifelong racist? No, she doesn't. Does it matter to her that as long as he's a Democrat... <laughs> it's fine to be a racist. Yeah, That's, she, is that her? Is that her? She's a racist as well. the The problem is, is that yes, yeah, she knows this because she's spent just as long, just as long yeah, as she's long in the tooth. Just as long as Joe's been there, she's been there, and that's what cracks me up. Is you these these people, as in the Democrats, hey, careful want, want all these changes, and yet you vote for the same criminal organization. Mm. Into power. You keep these people around. Why? You're never going to change. It's not going to change. Do you think they che cheat? Che <laughs> I don't know who cheats or who doesn't cheat. Uh. But they need to change the people. Change the faces. This lady's been in... She's a, she's in... You have Pelosi on one side of San Francisco. You got this chick on the other side of San Francisco. And then you have Gavin Newsom, who's like Pelosi's nephew, cousin's brother. I don't know what he is. Nephew or something. Uncle's brother's cousin's mother. Who are all running San Francisco into the shithole, and yet we have a we're running for re-election this year? Please, please. Who are you? We hope that you decide to vote us back in. Why? Why? What did you, you just say? From what I understand, San Francisco used to be a a gem of the West. Yeah, it's shit. Everything's shit. I mean, even Full House doesn't want to live there anymore. <laughs> Is that house still there? <laughs> I'm sure it's still there. Wages and salaries for workers grew. No, no, they didn't. Mm. Today, I got my raise. Did you? Yes. Today, good. I got my raise. Good for you. 3%. Wow. No bonus. 
What do you need a bonus for? Yeah. Well, I don't need a bonus. What you, do I need a bonus for? You're making... I'd rather see my team get a bonus. You're making I'd rather millions. see the people that work for and with me get a bonus. You're but making, they didn't get one either. You're, mo- <laughs> you're making millions and billions of dollars. Who, me? Yeah, aren't you? No. no right. I'm just a regular guy working my ass off. Just a regular schmo. And I'm okay with that. Living my life. I'm okay. I'm okay trading my time for salary. I'm okay. good with that. All right. And 3%, hey, it's nothing to brag about, but... At least I got some, so I'm grateful. I'm fine with that. But that three percent doesn't cover <laughs> this rocket inflate. What seven percent inflation? Well, I mean, it doesn't even cover my gas, my fuel for the fucking year. Apparently, you it doesn't even cover the seventy five cents that just went up in the last week. You know how much it cost me to cross that bridge to go to work? I'm aware. It's like sixteen bucks a day. Yeah. Well, figure calculate that. How much is that a year? It's more than my raise. Well, tolls are probably about a hundred dollars a week, so it's four hundred a month. So you're spending how much a year, give or take? Four thousand plus. Forty eight hundred dollars a year in taxes. Give or, give, my raise was no, tolls. Tolls. I'm sorry, four thousand eight hundred dollars a year in tolls. Tolls. Give or take. Yeah. You know, that I, doesn't cover my. That's more than my raise was. Give and or that t- doesn't count the increase in fuel. Give or take a. Uh, you know, a, a week off here and there. So maybe it's 4,500. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I, 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 what, what are these people kidding? And yet the roads in Jersey are horrendous. The bridge may collapse when we're crossing it. Uh, that's already cracked once. The sad part is, is that there's only one way to work that's feasible, really. And it's that. Tall. Well, unless you want to get up two hours earlier. I don't. Take the long way around. Then you got to pay the gas price to save money on the toll. So well, once, yeah, now you're definitely it's you're either, fucked either way you go. It's either you're paying a higher gas price to go, you know, the gas to less drive gas. twenty miles out of the way to go over a free bridge. The less gas mileage. It's not even free anymore. It used to be free. It's not free anymore. No. And now they charge a toll on that one too. Damn. Well, inflation. Okay. It's poo. at four point five percent in twenty twenty one, which is the highest pay increase. For workers since 1983. Importantly, these wage increases have been most significant for huh. low income workers. I knew that huh. was coming. Thank you. So, again, they're, they're, they're promoting these percentages and these wage hikes and these wage increases. Thank you. Compared to when? Compared to what? Oh, the no. shittiest ones they ever had? Like, what are we doing? I mean, people just freaking go along with it. And I, this this is why I didn't like, this is why I wanted that clip. Because none of this makes sense. Because now you're telling me we've had the largest growth of, of people in February. But then you're going to, I see this article. It's just an article. Yeah. Would you like me to read it? <laughs> go ahead. This article here from Labor and Statistics, which is the be all, the end all for March 9th to says 4.3 million Americans quit their jobs in January, according to a new report released by the Bureau and labor of statistics on Wednesday. This report comes on the heels of the Biden regime claiming 678,000 new jobs were created added in February. were added in February, bringing the unemployment rate to 3.8%. Some, well, you know, you know, when they, <clears throat> when they, Bring that unemployment rate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some, a lot of people have stopped looking for jobs. So that doesn't account for the that unemployment they're not rate. On rate unemployment rate. Anymore. They're not looking anymore. They're done. Well, that's what I said back yeah. in, in, uh, Dummies. that's what I said back in September when they stopped paying the, the uh, pandemic, uh, unemployment because, and people still weren't going back to work because they couldn't find jobs. Well, and maybe I'll just take my business elsewhere. So they just rolled with it and was like, well, it's the lowest ever. Well, all right, whatever. Wasn't there one more thing well, about I the... Uh, I, can't, I can't go there. One more thing about unemployment and jobs? Uh, I might have got rid of it. Oh, my God. Can't go there either. <laughs> can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere. We'll get kicked off YouTube. All right. All right. Can't get kicked off of YouTube. Not again. What's this one? This video is coming back to haunt Kamala Harris. Okay, let's let's hear what this one is. 
This is live on Good Morning America. Look how pretty she looks. I think this is when she was talking about a protest or something. I would see. So does that mean you support proposals like what we've seen in Los Angeles? Mayor Eric Garcetti saying, take some of the money from policing, about $150 million, invest it in health initiatives, training initiatives for youth. The, in, right now, what we're seeing in America is this many is, cities spend... This is when she was running for president. And then this was after... This video was put together after the State of the Union last week when Joe was like, we got to fund the police and stuff like that. Oh, and this is when she... Okay. So this is when she was running for president. And, before uh, she, so does that George mean you Steffi support like what yeah. we've seen in Los Angeles? Mayor Eric Garcetti saying, take some of the money from policing, about $150 million, invest it in health initiatives, training initiatives for youth. Really? Most health work. initiatives and training. In, take the money from the cops yeah. and give it to health initiatives and training initiatives for the youth. Well, that's, yeah. For the youths. The youths. What yeah. I was yeah, that was okay. that's what the mayor wanted yeah, to do. That's a great idea. Okay, let's listen. The in, in, right now, what we're seeing in America is many cities spend over one third of their entire city budget on policing. But meanwhile, well, there's a lot of fucking criminals out there. What cities <laughs> were they? Which he doesn't <clears throat> he doesn't go back and ask. So, and what's the crime problem in those said cities? That well, I don't she's care talking? that they spend that much money on policing. Maybe they need it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you have a large amount of crime, maybe you need one third of your budget to be spent on policing. Okay. Well, let's see what she says. Uh, we've been defunding public schools for years in America. We've got to re examine. Which, by the way, is a great idea. <laughs> you should defund the public schools because they're just indoctrinating your fucking children. The, also, with that. And teaching them how to be transgender. With the defunding of public schools. The problem is, is that the teachers in the inner city communities don't s work so well, or the kids aren't learning enough, or they're not being taught enough. So yet, now the people in the communities are willing to pay for their kids to go to private schools. These private schools, yeah. or charter schools, or schools yeah. that are popping up because the charter schools then pay their teachers to actually do work and their students and people within those communities excel instead of being at some bullshit ass public you know what school. You know what that's called? What? Capitalism. <laughs> it's called competition. May the best man win. Well, they don't want the competition. Oh, I know they don't want the competition. They want the money. You got to keep the public schools open and the teachers unions fat and fed. Right. You can't you can't teach kids. You can't compete because then you'll have smart kids. Yeah. A better economy. Yeah. A better uh, job pool. And a, lo a lot of these... But we want kids to be third graders <laughs> and question their fucking gender. Well, we also want... And graduate high school with their fucking hands out. And a third grade education because the teachers just roll the kids out because they're terrible. And it's like, just move them along. Right. Keep them going. That's called... Uh, what do they call that? Well, the No Child Left what Behind was, was the stupidest fucking thing that... Yeah. that was made up. No Child Left Behind created Jethro Bodine. Was it? I graduated the sixth grade. But it was it was just another stupid slogan that they never followed through with. Another fucking three word slogan. All right, here we go. No and what we're doing with American taxpayer dollars, and ask the question: Are we four four word? <laughs> it's more. It doesn't matter. But it was still his slogan. Getting the right return on our investment. Are we actually creating healthy and safe communities? And that's a legitimate conversation, and it requires a, a really critical evaluation. I applaud Eric Garcetti for doing what he's done. It is outdated. It is wrong-headed thinking to think that the only way you're going to get communities to be safe is to put more police officers on the street. What we have to do, and what we will do, is reimagine public safety. Well, what does reimagine mean? That's one thing I never, ever got an answer to. It's a word they love using. Reimagine. Reimagine is defunding the police. Mm -hmm. Period. Well, they want to reimagine. Well, because the police are racist. What the image of their city. Yeah, but it, it, it's the same thing that they. Listen. I'm listening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, li to. Listen. You're going to school me? I'm going to be like, Joe, listen. Look. Look, man. Hey, come on, man. A lot of the police. And policing, and again, on the border, where they try to say it's racist, 
It's racist people working. Are people from those communities, which are all right, fine, African Americans, Latinos. That's who's predominantly working in those communities. So in these bigger cities. So for her and everybody to go, it's racist and it's not helping, you're wrong. Maybe the communities just are bad and the police can't do anything because the the laws that these district attorneys, especially now, that are putting in place, the people don't care. The criminals don't care. They're not worried about it. No, the criminals aren't worried about it. All right. We should all agree the answer is not to defund the police. It's to fund the police. Fund them. Neck looks like a vagina. Yeah, so I mean, the end of his speech was we got to fund the police, we need stronger border security, and we need to buy American products made in America. So, <laughs> Joe, did you just say basically Trump slogans? All right, she looks, big. yeah, she doesn't even look the same. She, she looks like he was in a fight with Mike Tyson. Yeah, she doesn't even look like, and this is only a, a couple of days after the oh state my God, of the this union. poor woman, they're destroying her. <laughs> God, I don't know about that. Look at her, poor Kamala. I'll put this up on this on the website. I got to save that one. Wow. All right. Where it hurts is to go after his oil and gas sector, and some senators agree, Republican and Democrat. Uh, Senator Joe Manchin, for example, mentioned that the U.S. is still currently buying approximately six hundred thousand barrels of, of crude and uh, other petroleum products every single day. Is that on the table? Is that something that the administration would continue would consider in terms of further sanctions, cutting off the oil and gas? Uh, part of the economy for Russia? Well, as you know, that on this issue, for example, we applaud Germany in terms of what it has done as it relates to Nord Stream 2, as it relates to what we need to do domestically as well as, as what we need to do in terms of this issue generally. We have, as the President said, uh, reevaluated what we're doing in terms of the strategic oil reserve here in the United States to make sure that it will not have an impact or we can mitigate the impact on the American consumer. Uh, but let's, let's take this one step at a time understanding that right now on the issue of energy our allies have stood firm and unified in a way that many of the pundits didn't predict would happen um, to ensure that we are we are unified in our approach to this issue what the pundits what the fuck is she talking about the people like you and i we're pundits she's a fucking nitwit Whoa. see that's the problem they make her look like a nitwit and she's not uh yeah, I, th I think she is, because... <laughs> All right. In case you didn't know, and I know Joe's like, we are stopping taking oil from Russia as of today, but he said as of today, but what really happened is is that there's a 45-day hold on it to where they're still, we're still, we have 45, 45 days from whenever he said it the other day. So there's, we're still accepting those 600,000 barrels at whatever price they are. For the next 45 days. So if yeah. this goes on for 45 more days, this little war, it's not going to matter. And until somebody, I mean, it's in there. You can find it. That he, that that it's in that little moratorium, you know, his little referendum that he put on there, his little uh, sanctions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if this goes on for another 45 days and, you know, Putin doesn't stop or the Russia thing doesn't, or the Ukraine, you know, it doesn't die down, then what? He's going to be like, all right, we're going to go. We're going to go another 30 days. And I know Germany also was quick to go, yeah, we stand behind you in this. But 50, I think it's close to 55% of their oil and energy comes through that Nord Stream 2 line. So if they shut that off, what are they going to do? I don't know. They have no options. They're stuck. That getting, means they're not going to do anything. Yeah, they're stuck, which is kind of where a lot of European nations are right you now. You said European. I know. Over there, they're stuck because they have to continue to accept it because they are heavily reliant on that pipeline. So it's kind of like... This is Peter Griffin. All right. Uh, speaking of Peter Griffin, let's talk about Pete... Bo Bo His name is Buttigieg. I know. I didn't know that. Petey Butt. That's why I... Buttigieg. Put a Buttigieg. Petey Butt. Peter Buttigieg on drilling to lower gas prices. 
We're engaging in diplomacy to increase global production. We're in transformation away from oil. Wait, what? Do you listen to that? We're engaging in diplomacy to increase global production. We're in transformation away from oil. Wait, how do you increase global production but transform away from oil i i don't know man what does that even mean What's the, maybe that's like double maybe, speak maybe it's misquoted i don't think so all right let's hear what he let's let's hear it right out of the words of pete Buttigieg. <laughs> national events mr secretary you right, mentioned hold on, i gotta go back here ready Night as the U.S. deals with a number of crises. A number indeed. The president has also been plagued by some low poll numbers. Average approval rating as of now hovers around 40 percent. And Democrats, the whole good. party, in fact, uh, faces pressure to perform with the <laughs> midterm elections coming up. I like how they say average. Perf pressure to perform. <laughs> I like that. Give them some Viagra. I like the average. So the average of the two polls, like one's like 20, the other one's. 30, so well, it would have to be we'll just... 50. It would have to be higher. Well, Stupid. And the pandemic is entering its third year. Supply chains uh, have not fully recovered. Inflation is up. 40-year highs. Do, Supply is do down. Do you see that picture? Uh, yeah. Where the trains? Do you know what yeah. that is? Yeah. What is it? They were looting the trains. <laughs> Why are we cleaning that up? Why would we? That's that's amazing. If you clean that up, it's racism. I see that picture now, and I'm like laughing. Like you would think that was like. In El Salvador or Honduras. Hey, you think that was the United States of America. Nah. No. Nah, we can loot trains. As a matter of fact, when we're done our podcast, Let's I'm going I'm to go loot some trains. Might as well do it. I'm going to get us some Roku TVs and we'll hand them out to our other listeners. Okay. <laughs> Free Roku TVs for everybody. Uh, some experts are Maybe. questioning when this will be uh, rectified. The president. He said rectified. <laughs> That's like wrecked them. I know. That's funny. It's a great segue to go into Pete Buttigieg. I know. The guy probably did that on purpose. Okay. The president will also discuss, of course, the war in Ukraine. One of the fallouts from the invasion is the rising price. Anal invasion. So, I, what? What? I, what? Nothing. How did you just break my table? No, I pulled a piece of splinter out. Uh. Oil and natural gas. The president is expected to discuss how it will affect the wallets of Americans. See, Joining us now on all of these topics is Pete Buttigieg. See me watching that video right there with the like, why? Are, what's the? Can it's it, a point of showing the looted trains. No, no, no. The the, the military guys. Like yeah. it looks like they're showing a demonstration, which is fine. But I like what's with all the different colored armbands? Like I don't know. I, did, I didn't notice it. Have you noticed? Well, they were, those were yellow, but I noticed like in uh, like it's like Russians are red, violets are blue. Like. Is it so you don't like bend over, Pete Buttigieg? I'm about to invade you. Is it just so that they like so <laughs> the cameramen know that those are Russians and these are? I don't know. I don't know. I noticed in a couple of videos. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Play. Good, 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 play Pete. And more is U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. Secretary Buttigieg, welcome. Great to have you with us. Let's start with the president's upcoming speech. It's really. Great. How do you expect him to address the growing mm -hmm. number of issues this country is confronted with? Well, I think this is a great opportunity for the president to speak directly uh, with the American people, uh, partly to review what has been achieved and accomplished in the last year, uh, even in the face of everything that America and the American economy have been up against. Uh, you look at what it means to have set records for job creation, and that didn't just happen on its own. That's a result of the president's leadership, and this will be an opportunity, I think, uh, to note that uh, congressional action was helpful here, too. Of course, the president has uh, a number of items that he is asking Congress to act on going forward, things that will make our economy stronger for the long run, things that will be helpful in the face of rising prices, whether we're talking about gas or other sources of inflation. The president's put forward legislation that the American people already strongly agree with to lower the cost of insulin, to lower the cost of housing, to lower the cost of child care. Uh, the $13.5 billion they're given to fucking Ukraine could fucking wipe out the cost of insulin. Not only that, he, he took, with his executive order in day one, he took what the plan that Trump had in place for the insulin, and then he just turned around seven months later and was like, well, here, I just, I just signed this order for you to get this insulin real cheap. Cheap? It should be free. 
But he's been doing this. Like he's been walk like all a lot of the stuff he'd walk back with the Trump orders or the executive orders in those first couple of days. He's now putting in as like, oh well I've done this and I've done that. Like, no, you've just turned what you had what Trump was doing, you rewrote it and you're like, Oh, here's my thing. Like you're just you you're you're just falling back on the plan that was already there. He should have just left the country the way it was and everything would have been fine. Instead, can't. they got to come in and get their filthy hands on it. Can't do that. Well, they got to get their cut. Monkey, to lower the cost of electric monkey vehicles, with a something football. we care about a lot here in the Department of Transportation, of course. And I think recent developments in the news have only heightened the importance of addressing like these Paul kitchen Boy. table uh, issues that the president insists need action, sending something to his desk so that he can sign it and continue to support Americans going through daily life in the face of all of these crosswinds, whether it's from COVID, uh, inflation, or uh, even from international events. I got an idea. What's up? My idea is Joe Biden, don't fucking sign nothing. Congress, don't put nothing through. Leave us the fuck alone and let us live our lives. Yeah. We'll be fine. We don't need you. <laughs> the United States of America does not need... This fucking psycho ass government telling us what to do or doing anything for us. Well, not. We'll be fine. Get the fuck out of the way and let capitalism take over and let us fucking produce. Because nobody, nobody on the planet can produce like the American people can. Get the fuck out of our way and let us do our thing and you will see trees grow, oil pumped. Cars driven, money made, lives saved. Get the fuck out of the way. Move the fuck over. Either lead, follow, or get the fuck out of the way. You guys have no clue what you're doing. You're a bunch of pompous ass who have no fucking clue what's going on in this fucking world. But they got it. I'm done. I'm, I had enough of this shit. <laughs> this is this has got to end. We need people. We need smart people. Just get the fuck out of the way. You you. you you, you you started out strong. <laughs> get out of my way. I just, and then, then you uh, let poor Petey get, I get in your mind. I can't take this guy. Well, it's not just him. It's it's You're right. The whole woke agenda and all it's, that stuff. I'm there. done with it. But I agree. We don't need all this over-regulating in this country. Right. You're over... You're... 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 Uh, like... No, like innovation and stuff like that. You're 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 you're, you're squashing you're, it, right? Because you're stifling you're, it. You're trying to do too much, and we don't need all this help from you because you know what? You're not helping anybody. Right? You don't know what to do. You're not. That's what I mean. Like, and it's like when people are like, "Well, and Trump was a builder. He knew how to plan. He had building. You know what I mean? He ran businesses. Right. All these people that are career politicians. They've and never done anything. They've never built anything. They've never worked exactly. with their hands. They've never done this. This guy's fucking 37 years old telling everybody how to drive a fucking electric bike to work. That's all he can do. Because he doesn't know anything else. Exactly. You're exactly right. The guy has no... The only criteria... The only... Not... It's not because he's gay. No, it's the only reason why he's in there is because he's it's gay. No. He, yes. He got... He was a mayor. I understand. A that. mayor. He... You have to... Here, you have to think back. Think way back, machine. No, they <laughs> the way back. They when he checked was, the box. When he was, I under, when he was running for president, he was the gay candidate, and then he was stealing some. You have to think about the whole overall picture. He was stealing votes. No. You had Did the you women say bloat? <laughs> votes stealing votes. That was a Freudian slip. He. You had Elizabeth Warren, who was the Indian person of She's color. She's not Indian person of color. You had Amy Klobuchar. She's white as white could be. You had all these different factions of people, and then he dropped out. Elizabeth Warren dropped out at a certain point, and when he dropped out, there was probably a backdoor deal, no pun intended. I'm sure. Where hey, you drop out, endorse me, and I'll put you on. All right. I'll put you on our. Uh, in the cabinet. I got you. you. You did a great a great job there, Tom. I appreciate it. No, you did a good job. No, you so did you a better job. Still flying until up. I lost my fucking mind. All right, listen, Orange Man out. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Thanks, everybody.